Hi everyone, I've had a few people comment recently that they would like to see some of my collection. So what I've done is I've taken some of my Mosasaur and Plesiosaur uh, fossils out that I could here in the workshop over here. And let's have a look at them together. This is one of my earliest finds. I think this was only the first or second time I was in a Cretaceous area. And you can see here's a bone over there. Then as we go around, there's one, there's one, and there's a few more, and they're all, you can see they're all articulated, so they're still in place. And I'm not sure if it is a, a paddle bone or some vertebra. I'm, I'm not even quite sure what animal it is. It's Cretaceous. So I'm guessing it's a, a plesiosaur. Uh, it could be a mosasaur, I'm not sure. If it is a vertebra, that one looks to be the shape of a mosasaur vertebra where it's got the convex side and the concave side, but if it's paddle bones, I'm not sure. I've left this one unprepped until I got a bit better at prepping. It might be a, I might be at the stage where I can try and prep it now. Not much separation between the rock and the bone. You can see it's real stuck on there and there doesn't seem to be doesn't seem to be peeling away nicely at all. And this is my first paddle bone I ever found. A beautiful one. It wasn't even in the sediment, it was in the, the loose scree on the side of the cliff. Once again I'm assuming plesiosaur just because they're more common but it could be a mosasaur. I don't know enough about paddle bones to say what species, or what type of animal it is, never mind what species. This one was also near it. Just a random piece of bone. This is actually one of my favorite bone clusters over here. Uh, it's got a lot of cracks running through it, so the prepping was a little bit tricky. But you can see these are vertebra over there, there section of one over there of a juvenile plesiosaur that's a big section of rib over there and you can actually see the the outline of where it used to be there so you can actually cast it and get the impression over there the same over there there's a, a big bone over there that you can still see the impression it's left but these vertebrae are beautiful they're such a really nice texture and feel there to them this was one of the first acid preps I did. So a combination of air scribe and acid prep. You can see the really big trace fossil there. They had to be really careful to keep that trace fossil from being dissolved by the acid because it's actually just the same material as the rock there. This is one of my more recent finds and preps. You can see there's one, two, three. I think there's three separate vertebrae in there. What's quite beautiful about this is look how the staining goes down the middle of the bone. So this side has got that really black staining and then we've got a nice reddish stain on the other side. This was actually a dream one to prep. The rock was nice and soft, the matrix, and reacted really well with the acid. The vinegar dissolved so easily. I'm going to include this piece as well, but this is a bit of a mystery. You can see whatever this is coming through there, it's a very thin bone and it's quite hollow. So I'm unsure what it is. I'm going to have to prep it. And it's got all these, I think they're calcite crystals. Very weird fossil process going on here. Look at those crystals. Then probably my favorite plesiosaur fossil I've collected and prepped is this really big vertebra. In perfect condition, normally these processes get knocked away as it tumbles down the river. But you can see it's got the center part there and the three processes. And it's so complete and quite large. It's even got this weird feature over here, which I haven't seen on many plesiosaur vertebrae, that little hollow back there. And the textures are so cool. 
I've made a 3D model of this one which is available on Sketchfab. You can download it for free. You can 3D print it if you want to. Yeah, this is such a cool fossil. It's one of my favorite ones. These aren't uh, plesiosaur or mosasaur vertebrae, these ones. They're really large shark vertebrae from the Cretaceous. So I've included them in this video because I don't know where else to put them. They're dinosaur age um, because sharks have been around for a really long time. But look how big they are. I think they're about 11 centimeters in circumference. That's like four and a quarter inches, I think, across. Would have been a really big shark. I think like six meters. What's that? 18 feet. I still need to prep them. I didn't want to prep them when I found them because I wasn't confident enough. But yeah, I'll come back to these. This is one of my favorite marine reptile blocks. So marine reptile being things like plesiosaurs and mosasaurs. Not a true dinosaur. And look at that paddle bone sticking out there. That's such a beautiful one. And it's so big compared to my other paddle bone. I think it's a paddle bone. But have a look at that. Just for reference. This would have been a big animal. And what's even more exciting is... Where did it go to now? Might have to just rotate it. But there are many, many more bones in here. Oh yeah, it's on the other side. Look at that. That's quite a large bone there. And then there's another one, another one, and another one. So all in a row. And this kind of rock over here is really nice to prep. It's really big grain sizes, so it does well with the acid prepping. Yeah, I'm excited about this one. <laughs> I'm confident enough now to prep this one. That's what I was doing when I was uh, starting out collecting. Anything that I thought was significant, I didn't prep. I wanted a few years of experience. Yeah, so it's, a, it's a decent sized block. So I assume, so the bones start here and they go in a line across to there. So if I remove this bit of rock over here, we should see what's hiding inside there. I'm always super excited when I see someone from New Zealand prepping fossils and Simon has just prepped one of his first crabs. Have a look at how well he did these. Those came out so well. Well done, Simon. Simon's using the Dremel 290 engraver, which is the same uh, electric engraver that I started using when I first started fossil prepping before I moved to the pneumatic, the air-powered ones. This is the Dremel 290 engraver. So it's powered by electricity, not a compressor like my other ones are. And it comes with this really short standard stylus, but you can order your own ones, really sharp ones or longer ones. There's various places online you can do that. I've also seen people actually fashion their own because I think this is quite a standard width over here. Thanks so much for joining me everyone. I hope you enjoyed that little peek into my collection. Uh, if there's anything else you would like to see, maybe some crabs or some uh, penguins or whatever you would like to see, let me know and I'll try and put together another video like this. Stay safe and I'll see you on the next hunt.